He's saying hi. Ooh, this feels like a good one, bud. He's saying hi. This feels like a good one. Whoa, that's a massive angler. Um, Daddy, we still have to flay that one. Yep. Put him in the bucket. You, oh, get, no. you get him in the bucket. Get him in the bucket. Wait. Uh, Daddy, I'm trying to get him in the bucket. Okay. Chill out. My name is Zachary McNaughton, and I am not a professional angler. I've been fishing for over 20 years, and the one thing that these years have taught me most is that I have a lot to learn. So let's meet some of Vermont's true master anglers, and together we'll discover some fishing techniques and explore the many species that this great state has to offer. Today, we're headed up to Lake Nymphomagog near the Canadian border to target rainbow smelt through the ice in shallow water with Robert Pelosi. One of the things I'm looking forward to this one is actually how we're gonna get to our spot. Robert has a unique device called the Snow Dog, which basically is a train that tows several jet sleds. And we'll be heading out a couple of miles into the lake to one of the islands where he's heard reports from local fishermen that the smelt bite is hot right now. He's gonna show me his technique and hopefully we'll get into some. All right. Talk to me a little bit about the yeah. equipment that we're using. A, a quality reel with light, light line. Uh, I use very, very light leader. 5X, 6X fluorocarbon tippet. Um, Haley's or tungsten teardrops dressed with some glow bug yarn and spring bobbers. Those are, those I, I consider to be key critical pieces of gear for smelt fishing. It's not a lot of glow, glow bug yarn. It doesn't take a lot. No, it's just, just a tiny bit tail. I, I exaggerated this. This one, this is much more than I normally put yeah, on. Yeah, that's different than mine um, quite a bit. Like somebody's mouthing it there. I just saw that. Oh, yeah? Yep. Yeah, he's mouthing it. There he is. <laughs> Sweet. There you go. <laughs> yep. So, in the, uh, the smelt on this lake are a little on the small side, unfortunately. Um, so, he's about maybe four inches. Great bait. They're not super durable at this size, but they're still a great bait. By having that glow bug yarn, on the hook, they just, they're, they're forced to hold on to it longer. Yeah. Uh, they cannot grab it and spit it back out uh, because the, uh, the, little, the little fibers get caught up in their teeth. Yeah, I saw when you took yours off that it was yep. a bit of like a yep. dry skin and the cotton ball. Yes, exactly. So you're on, you're on bottom there. So I'm just gonna have you do two cranks up and then, um, I've got that spring bobber set really loose, so this one will detect anything. Like I said, so the bite, I imagine you don't really feel, it's more of a visual game. It's, it's visual in the spring bobber, and um, it takes some getting used to, because it's not about detecting the bite, it's about knowing when to set the hook. You, um, If you ever are in a situation where you can watch them, you can sight fish them, they they will come in and slash, but not take the bait. So they, a lot of times they'll bump it. And when when you have the most vicious strike, as indicated by your, by your spring bobber, you'll never hook those fish because the, they never had the bait in their mouth. So what you're looking for is a bite. You know, sometimes it's a negative bite. The spring bobber will ease up, basically the tension's off, and then you're waiting for it to deflect again, and you know they've got it. Right. But then. You have to know how much deflection. How much deflection is your lure versus how much deflection is a smelt. So it, 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 it's it, by about the 50th or 100th one, you get you figure it out. But it, but but there is definitely a learning curve. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. There get him. You go. All right. Go ahead and, yeah, go ahead. If you if he's still there. <laughs> All right. My first the smelt. First smelt. There you go. That is cool. And I'll, uh, I'll definitely just put they're him like, in. I'll put him in a live well. They're like micro tarpon. Yeah. <laughs> that is something else. Look at that. And they, uh, like like all great bait fish, they to me they smell like watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah. 
and he's he's on he's off but he's on the the fiber you see how that oh yeah that dude. just holds it really holds yep i'll go ahead and i'll put him in the fly well yeah i've heard a lot of people talk about how their teeth can get stuck and stuff but now i really get it yeah because uh yep it was actually difficult to pull that sinker yeah. off of there yep I do believe that spring bobbers are absolutely critical. Yeah, I can uh, see that. I, I like, I really, I, you know, some, some people don't like them, but I really like the St. Croix Legend Series rods with, with, with the, uh, their, their proprietary spring bobber. Um, I've had a couple of other different spring bobbers over the years. I've never thought they worked that well. The cool thing about the St. Croix is they're adjustable. I, I mean, I yeah. can, I'm fishing a, 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 let's see, how big is this one? This is a, a 25 millimeter Haley on this one, which is probably 3 16 maybe a quarter of an ounce. You're fishing a number four tungsten. Same, it's the same spring bobber. It's just, it's adjusted differently in that holder mm -hmm. so that it's sensitive enough. Um, so I, I like, I just love that flexibility. I think, I think so that's a really- So the further out it is toward the, the more, tip, sensitive more sensitive it is, correct. Yeah, and so the heavier the bait, the closer, the closer to the tip you, uh, you adjust it. The flasher definitely changes the game uh, because like I said, you really have to work the individual marks on your machine to figure out where in the water column the fish are aggressive. The green line that you see bouncing to the right that's my lure. So just under that, you see the smelt. As a, as a general rule, I've always found that the smelt higher in the water column are, are feeding or more aggressive. Pick it up and I see there's still some, oh, there's a fish up high, so I'll raise up to that one. Any flasher will help you catch smelt. Um, just, just because it allows you to always visually stay in contact, or uh, maintain contact between your lure and fish in the water column. When I see smelt on the screen, I try every little blob, you know, every mark, I see if I can't get them to bite. And often what you will find is that the fish high in the water column are aggressive or somewhere in the water column there will be fish at a certain depth that for whatever reason bite while the others don't. And so you have to, you have to constantly experiment until you can define a pattern. And then once you have the pattern, you stick with it until it changes. And they, they can, they will, sh they will turn on flip of the switch. They will turn off flip of the switch. You'll think, oh geez, I'm going to catch a couple hundred today. And then suddenly they shut off and you go home with a dozen. Um, it's, 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 they can be so maddening. That's, that's a perch. And the, the perch, um, they will shut the bite, the smelt bite right off. Oh, because they're in here eating the yep. smelt? Yep. Whoa. <laughs> there you go. There we go. All right. Second that drop down in there. Had me a smell. There you go. Now yeah, they're on. All right, so just, put them, just put them on the ice if you want. Another. There. That and was how's, a... your, how's your spike doing? You need to, oh, I didn't need to freshen them up. Check. I'll give it a second. That was like... The second it dropped, they were on. Yeah, when the, when the when the bite is on, it can be a lot of fun. But you know, we've been here 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes, and really hadn't been having action. And all of a sudden, we got three or four, just bam, bam, bam. And then there there could be a lull. It's it, not not unusual for them to turn on for a minute and then shut off for a few. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Tell that too. You got a flag? I do. Awesome. Thank you.
I don't think he's there. False alarm. Actually, now there's fish there. Holy smokes! Nice. So Robert's resetting the line, and I'm heading back to the pop-up to see if, uh, if we have any smell action going on in there. Yeah, go ahead go ahead and pull yours up we'll freshen up the bait spikes are cheap <laughs> your time is not <laughs> yeah. I uh, I really try I mean the first thing as soon as soon as I stop getting bites freshen the bait always um, have you have you fished with spikes before uh, only like once <laughs> so hold out your hold out your palm and I'll and I'll show you how to hook them So they have a little mouth. There's two little, the, you know, the tapered end is their rear. So uh, the the blunt end with the two little uh, dots, yeah. that's their mouth. Okay. So I usually go. They're they're surprisingly tough. So I just go right above the dots, and I, but I put it right through from outside, inside, back to. Oh, outside. kind of like a drop yeah. shot. Yeah. <laughs> they are. They are tiny here, unfortunately. But it's still a smell. Yeah, so you start behind the head and slightly behind the pectoral fins. And you feel it go through the backbone, but you don't want to go all the way through. So you go through the go through the backbone, then in, insert it through the anal vent, and then you just slice up about to where the gill plates are. And then just reach in with your finger and rip. And then everything just comes out in one one train just like that and you're chumming chumming with the row yeah what's what's very interesting about smelt fishing is each lake has i would say a unique population on each body of water the smelt that are present behave differently than in adjoining waters or or other waters in the state um, in terms of where they hang out depth there you go all right <laughs> not so lucky that time Bubba I think he's there actually yeah I've had him the whole time he's tiny I'm cut from the transducer yeah that's the type of one too. yeah but they still they'll fry up they're uh, oh. I love eating the darn things they Oh, there you go. All right, see so a little bit of chum, and suddenly, yeah, <laughs> suddenly actually, the bite turns on. I think the chum, yeah. honestly, that. that oh yeah, really that's definitely, that's definitely something they, that I. They seem to like the drop. I'm noticing. Um, most of the time when I've gotten bites is when interesting we're dropping back down the hole. Okay. Or uh, like I've, I've picked up really hot yep. and then just yes. I'm like, Oop, yep. There, we go. there you go. Another one. Got him. Like, I don't know, they seem to really like that dropping down to the motion. Sometimes, active, sometimes they are very turned on by speed, the, the, the presentation, either the drop, like you said, or sometimes actively pulling it away from them is what triggers the bite. Mm. And then other times, it has to be a complete dead stick. <laughs> Oh, you're that shallow. Oh, I see. You're just right below the ice. Yeah, I guess I've accidentally reeled setting this down. That wasn't intentional. But all of a sudden, that's where I'm yeah, getting all the bodies. That, that, that happens. Sometimes they will come up right below the ice. Um, yeah, that, that's always a lot of fun when you... Right there. See? Come on. Oh, yeah. They're like just under the ice. 
Now this is what I've heard about. <laughs> right below the ice right now. Okay. <laughs> is just mad crazy. Yeah, look at that, just bringing it up. I got that one. Didn't even know he was there. I was just adjusting my depth. Another one. All right. <laughs> that is my kind of fishing. And so I think this is this is one of the traditional areas on Memphis Magog. For for several years, the the fishing on Magog wasn't that great, and now it's coming back. But on Mag like I was saying, each lake is somewhat unique in terms of its smelt fishery. Uh, on Magog, it's always been shallow water near the islands. Uh, certainly, if you're out 20, 25 feet of water jigging perch, you, you, you will encounter smelt, but they, they really stack up in high concentrations in areas like we are we are today. I guess in my mind, I somehow I was thinking we would be fishing a lot deeper. Yes, um, on certain bodies of water, that is absolutely true. But on Magog, this is where, for whatever reason, traditionally they found them. Um, Peach and Pond, they're pretty much anywhere, but as the season progresses, they move towards the stream that, that feeds that pond and they stage in really deep water off of that stream. And, and so uh, whenever, I, whenever I fish Peachum, I go straight to that deep hole. I set up after midnight, I put my hydroglow down and I just have clouds of them under me for hours, you know, basically till daybreak. All right. Nice, nice productive afternoon. That'd be a couple, maybe three good meals. Um, Terrific, terrific fry. They are they are, are one of my favorite fish to eat. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you getting me out here. New species for me. And, uh, I mean, you know, there were windows where we didn't catch stuff, but it yeah. was pretty active from start it, to it end. It was. And certainly even, even when there was a lull, they were visible on the flasher. So right. they were present. But that smelt, they, they will turn on and off throughout the day, throughout the night, and you just have to stick with it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's definitely, like, you'd see them and then... When it turned on, it was crazy. Yep. We were doubling yep. like mad, and then it would shut off yep. and back on. So yeah, it was a lot of fun, and I know this is something that like has been very culturally a big thing in Vermont. I, I part think of so. I, yeah, I think uh, I think it's a big part of the culture in the Northeast Kingdom. It certainly was a, a big part of the culture in Ch on Champlain for many, many years, many generations. And um, it, it, it's a shame that um, that fishery has has not rebounded. Uh, but there are so many opportunities in the Northeast Kingdom for smelt. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Really, well, really encourage people to come out and try for them. Yeah, definitely a lot of fun. Definitely something you can do with the family. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I appreciate you sharing this. Yeah, with sure you. thing, sure thing. Thanks for watching this episode of Vermont Master Anglers. For more content, visit our Facebook page at Vermont Master Anglers. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe.